Hello and welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelly. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, today we're going to do something kind of different. Um, I did get, I got a really wonderful package in the mail today. Um, this is a deck that I purchased off Etsy that I have been eagerly awaiting for a while. Um, the printing of the deck got a little delayed by the world events, so things going on in the world with the virus. But I, um, I wanted to kind of do my first unboxing on the video on the channel um, I've done several videos that talked about like my favorite decks like back back in January I participated in the 31 days of tarot where I talked a lot about the different decks that I use and which decks are my favorite but um, this deck is an independent deck that is done by um, a, an Etsy um, creator her name is the van mystic um, her real world name is Nikki and I will gladly list the link for the deck in the description box below. Right now the deck is, it, it'll be listed as sold out just because everything is again, you know, the reprint of things will probably take a little bit of time. But if you have purchased this deck for yourself or you are interested in purchasing it later on this year when it comes out, because I no doubt once we get back into the swing of things, um, you know, production of things will return. Um, I would love to see you be a patron of this creator because she was extremely communicative, very sweet, very understanding given the circumstances. And I just thought this was a wonderful deck and I wanted to go ahead and do a walkthrough for it. So what I'll do is, what you see here is what came in the box. It was very, very well packaged. It had, everything was color coordinated. I got a, a wonderful thank you and a bookmark, and I got a sticker that looks like one of the cards, and we'll see that in a minute. And um, I'll, I'll, if you're a follower of my channel, you know that I like to sew my own bags. So I actually already sewed a bag. I, I took from, from the pictures. It's a very silver kind of metallic purple, and then it has uh, white strings. So I hoped it coordinated. I think it did. <laughs> and at the conclusion, at the end of the video, we'll see how well I did. Um, I, this is my reading table. It probably looks a little bit different. I normally have a cloth over it. And this this table actually has a really wonderful story. This was actually created by my great-great-grandfather when he was 17. And it is over 100 years old, and I use it for everything. I use it for working at home, and I use it for my card readings. And um, this table actually will, in the next week or so, um, it might be going away to get some refinishing because it's been it's it's been well used for a long time. But I just wanted to let you know that the the natural background is is the same table that I use when you um, watch my regular videos. But enough, enough blabbing, let's get to it. Uh, this is the Starseeker Tarot, and it is by the Van Mystic. And again, all the details are in the description box below. And I, I've already flipped through it, but this is the official unboxing. So this is how it comes. It comes in a hard box that has the same color scheme. It's a beautiful purple and then sea green. It's almost like a muted blue. Um, it does come with a, a booklet. And the booklet has a wonderful key on the front, and it does. It gives a good, it has a one-page description for all of the cards, which I think is wonderful. And then um, I haven't gotten a chance, and that's so great. On the back you have, you have the key, and then you have the keyhole. So <laughs> and as you can see, we're already seeing the Fool. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to, you know, if you ever wanted to just keep it in the box, that would be completely accepted. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the, the book right inside here. But so the back, the card back, first off, the card stock is just amazing. It's got like a real solid core to it, but it has a good flex to it. And it's funny, you know, being a card reader for over a year, um, I've watched videos about both playing cards and tarot cards, and there's a lot, there's a lot of chemistry to it, you know, <laughs> that you never think about. We talk, we, once you've been dealing with cards for a long time, you start saying things like, well, it has good bend, and it's got good flex, and it's got a matte finish, so, you know. And I'm just just to clarify, I'm no expert on the printing of of cards, but um, I can kind of tell that it is. It's it's a thicker cardstock. It does. It has a core to it that's very thick. 
um, when it's when it's um, kind of printed that way it just means that it's real flexible sometimes when a card is a little bit more on the flimsy side it'll start to wear at the edges or it'll start to peel which is you know a disadvantage especially to such a gorgeous deck so just to let you know it's it is it's a very flexible cardstock and it's it's quite lovely so let's go ahead and we'll flip it over and again everything is in the same order as when I received it and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna let us uh, zoom in and what I'm gonna do is I am I'm just gonna flip it over where you can see it I hope the lighting is good but here we've got the fool and again I'm just gonna go one by one and let you look at it now what it is is um oh and real quick the card back you've got this beautiful again more of the marble purple and greens um you got um a white moon and stars and then it is almost like a silver kind of green kind of um a tree branch and um her artwork again i hope the lighting is doing it justice it's kind of a multimedia artwork uh, what that is is it's almost like it's almost like a collage. She took almost like cutting out pieces of magazine, except it was it's all digital. Um, so I really do like that style. You see a little bit of that in one of my favorite decks by the Art of Tarot by Liz Dean. But um, it is it's really lovely where you see there's these gradients of color and um, texture and pattern. Um, it is it's almost looking it almost looks like um, a collage made from a magazine so that's the magician and you definitely see you see all the elements on the table the pentacle the sword the cup the wand and the infinity and I love how she really does incorporate the the mountain in the background now the high priestess is definitely one of my favorites I think this is so gorgeous um, in this deck she does uh, the author the maker the creator um, is is definitely mindful she's um, it's it's very diverse I love I love seeing that I love seeing different ethnicities and I like seeing different interpretations um, the high priestess the other thing is that um, I think the author is very uh, body conscious uh, where you know none of the characters that you see are like you know model skinny and I kind of appreciate that if there's a realism there and um, I love this because, again, the lighting might not do it justice, but there's this very gossamer kind of veil and, you know, the magic coming out of her hand underneath the purple moon. It's just really gorgeous. Now, I think this Empress, gosh, I've already ha how to, done the How to Tarot on the Empress, but this one is really a gorgeous one. Um, you know, the again, with the gradient and the light and the sun, she and she just looks, she does, you know, they talk about having a glow when you're expecting, and I just, I see that in that card. And then you have the Emperor, and I think this is so great. I'll go ahead and say it. I think he looks a little bit like Thor. <laughs> and gosh, I am, if I'm not, like, a Thor fan. But um, one thing, I'm just going to hold these up next to each other. One thing that I think is really cute about this, what's really beautiful, is that, you know, the Emperor and the Empress in the tarot, they're, di they're divine counterparts. They're, you know, divine masculine, divine feminine. And it really does look like, they look like a couple, and it looks like she's smiling over at him. And I just think that's, that's you know, to see them side by side in a read is just really amazing. And then you have the hair font, which I think is nice. You definitely get a sense of spiritualism here. And again, she layers the, you know, it looks like a picture of the stel of the stellium. It looks like a supernova in the center. And it looks like the stars on the outside. Um, the rocks around him are, they do look like, they look like spheres, but they also kind of remind me a little bit of Stonehenge. And what is it? The Spacious Tarot definitely talks about that too. It shows Stonehenge as the, as the um, kind of the spiritual grounds. Now, again, oh my gosh, this is one of the cards that I did not see in the preview, and I was absolutely blown away. Again, I, you know, this would have been a contender if, if I had this deck back when I was doing the How to Tarot for the Lovers. You see the sun, and you see the moon, and just for the record, the emperor and the empress, they're the sun and the moon, or the sun and the moon also represents divine masculine, divine feminine, and you've got a rainbow in between if you can focus. 
And then you see these two people, they do, they look like Romeo and Juliet, but with a happier ending, right? And then you have this field of dandelions, which I just think, you know, when, when you think about wish fulfillment, you know, now the chariot, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to be saying this every card, but this is the first chariot that I've ever seen that has a little bit more of a feminine kind of look, and she has a star as a headdress. And I know that the, the traditional Rider Waite Smith chariot, he has a lot of celestial kind of, um, but I am, I absolutely love this. And again, the lighting's not really doing it justice, but the gradient on these horses, and then you do, you have, you have the phases in the moon in the background. That's a really gorgeous card. I'm going to be gushing over the majors for a while, and then we'll get through the minors. But um, strength is also really lovely. You have the traditional lion. And I love how the fact that she, if you do get this card in reverse, you kind of have a bright sun there and a, and a kind of lighter sun there. So it's almost as if she's prepared for you to read this card every way possible, right? Which is such a testament to the artist. That's just so brilliant. Um, the hermit I really love as well. Because a lot of times, you know, the hermit goes up to the mountaintop and he's holding the lantern, right? And here it looks like he's a wizard and he's holding galaxies in his hand. I just think that's miraculous. And again, when you look, um, when you get this deck in person, it really is, it, it has a lot of nuance to it that kind of is, is this not really represented on a regular camera. In, in real life, it's so much, it's, it's got a, a really inherent beauty. But the wheel, I think, is really different as well. It's a spider web. And I do, I almost think of kind of like Charlotte's web. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, I have a lot of animal oracle cards that talk about the spider as, as they, they always say create your dreams, right? And here, you know, when we talk about the wheel, it's like, it's like the wheel of destiny turning in your favor. It's like things happening for you. So I think that's such a beautiful interpretation. Um, this is the Justice card, and again, we have this gorgeous diversity. You have, you know, um, again, you have someone who, uh, of, a, of a different race, a different background, who's the Lady Justice, which I think is just amazing. And honestly, when you look at the Statue of Liberty, I kind of think of Justice that way too, but I think this is so gorgeous, the way that she envisioned this. And you do, you have, you have the impartial look of, of fairness on her expression on her face. Now, the hanged man is really different too. It's interesting, you know, if you talk to a lot of tarot readers, the hanged man is always the same, right? He's always upside down because otherwise, you know, how do you, how do you illustrate him, right? But here, this is kind of different. He is kind of hanging upside down, but he's kind of looking at the moon in a playful way. It's almost like he's an acrobat, right? So it does, it, it, gets, a lot, it gets a lot of the same um, illustration across, a lot of the same um, meaning, uh, but you can kind of see it a different way. Um, this is another card that if you read it in reverse, it, it looks almost like he's free falling. So I think that's gonna be a real fun one to read in a reading. Now, oh my gosh, guys, there are, there are a few cards that, you know, you don't want to talk about, but you, you're always curious. You're like, okay, how is death depicted in this deck? And again, this is another card that I, I did not see any preview for. And this is really amazing. You look, it almost looks like there's a night sky inside, and then there's a crow on his, on his shoulder, and there's these crows in the background. Again, when you get the deck, the lighting doesn't do it justice, but the, it's it's like this this gradient. It's like this fading. It's if you've ever done ink work, and I, I create cards, so I know how that is. When you stamp one ink over another, when you layer it, that's what it looks like. And and even though it's a laminated card, you still get that dimension from it. It's just amazing. And you know this is. This is such a poignant death because you see what it's, what it means, but you, you know, how, if you've ever had a moment in your life of transformation where you really have to let something go in order to become something else, don't you kind of feel like you're stardust, right? It, it almost helps you cope in remembering that you are part of the universe. Like this is part of your path, right? And that's what I really glean from that. And I think that's a really gorgeous interpretation. Then we've got Temperance, which is the water bearer. And again, we do, we have such a beautiful angel here. 
and um, at her feet she does still have the like it's almost like she controls the 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 seasons or she controls the she she calibrates the balance of life and then let's go ahead and the next one is really kind of powerful and again the tower is yet another one of those cards where it's like okay you kind of have to have you know of course what's the tower without a tower but this is really amazing you see this this thin pillar in the middle of the sea and it's all it's got the lightning and it's several lightning bolts right it's not even one it's several and you see the flames and one thing that I always think about, and we how to tower, how to tower it on the tower. We how to tear it on the tower. And um, one thing about this, when it comes up in a reading, it's like, will it fall or will it not? You know, and that's really more of the tower in reverse. You resisting the fall, you know, and it does. It looks like it's hanging there. <laughs> so again, that's yet another card that I really think that when I start reading it. Now this card was in the preview. Like it was one of the images that you got to see before you purchased the deck. And the, the star is one of those most positive cards. She almost looks like a mermaid here. <laughs> and it is really gorgeous, the, the blues and the purples. It really does. It does look like spiritual colors, and it looks like colors of enlightenment. Now, I'll just say the next two cards, oh my gosh. Uh, I am, I am, you know, again, sight unseen. There's a few of these cards I did not see. This moon is absolutely gorgeous and the lighting is not doing it justice i'm kind of holding it right here so you can get a good look in the distance you see the phases you see that layering oh gosh i'm glad that the camera's picking that up but it's got this layer here and what's interesting is that when you look sometimes you know it's interesting when i think of the moon i always i even said it in the how to tarot have you ever seen snow white in the seven drawers dwarves dwarves sorry i can't talk today it's it's a monday but um you know how when snow white gets frightened and she runs into the woods and she feels like you can see she can see eyes everywhere because everything's obscured right and it's like when you look at that you can kind of look and see okay is that a is that a goblin out to get me is that a fox that's just running by you can't you can make out things that aren't real in the shadows right and you can get become afraid and that's just really and honestly the printing of this it is um i don't think i mentioned it before it's a very satin it's it's got a real satin kind of matte feeling to it so i haven't shuffled it yet but we're going to then you got the sun which is again the moon is the divine feminine and the sun is the divine masculine and have you ever seen sunspots you know when you've been at the beach and you're you, you know you you're not looking at the sun but you're you know you're closing your eyes under the beach towel and you start to see the spots through your eyelids that she really you know she really got that and and then when you look at the canyon you know what makes you think of the sun more than you know the the, the beautiful west uh, or you know i think of west um the west in north america you know maybe the grand canyon but i do think that's a really beautiful sun but then you got judgment which i think is a really different card a lot of times you see persons popping out of um coffins and here you see flames right and it's it's almost kind of here i really do kind of think of bath, baptism by fire but you coming out of the dark, right? You, either that or you being your own flame, like a phoenix. I think that's a really beautiful message. Now, she, um, we're about to get to the, the last card of majors, but you got the world. And again, again, the, the lighting, she does such a beautiful job. Something about this printing, the, the choice of color and uh, printing materials just was really spot on because the darkness is not too dark. You really do see the nuances and color, and I'm so glad the camera's picking this up. But you do, you see that the, the, the culmination, the, the, that person floating in the center and the, the, the completion of the cycle. Now, she has one additional card that's considered a quote-unquote major. It's not a real major, but she's added it. And what it is is she calls it the womb, right? And I almost see this as kind of Gaia. 
it is kind of like the world and it's kind of like the empress it's kind of it, it's really about being one with nature and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just very quickly I'm gonna very quickly read it because it's in this deck it's card 22 and it's you know technically it's card 23 because the fool is zero right I think yep fool is zero so let's go ahead and just read real quick the womb it says um, according to the book it says I am here waiting and receiving in passive hibernation I am not ready to transform though I am not r resisting I am surrendering I wait and I am open I embrace and I allow myself to grow to ebb and flow with the natural rhythm and progression of life I wait I watch as my environment feeds me and I expand in response soon I will grow too large for the comfort of this embryo I will puncture these walls and push forward to meet the air I will take the gifts that I sustained that that sustained me in suspension and meet them with my own things are moving even if you're not aware of it yet for now observe 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 absorb and flow you will know when it's time to take action so wow guys that's just a really it's it's you know what it is it's almost like a card of surrender it's it's like saying you know you do you want to go ahead and just be um, and there's moments in life almost like before you begin a new cycle um, I do kind of take it as a little bit of a um, kind of a Neptunian kind of energy but there is so much beauty in it with you know feeling a part of the universe and knowing that your cycle is about to begin again all you have to do is surrender so that's a really beautiful extra card <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and I, I won't put so much doc, you know, conversation. I'll only speak when I need to. Um, sorry, I know I don't want this to be a long flip through. Flip, uh, flip through. <laughs> I can't speak today. Um, but we got the Ace of Pentacles. We got the Two of Pentacles. We just had a tarot on this, and I think this is so awesome. Then we got the three of pentacles, and honestly, guys, I probably we're about to have a tear on this, and I just think this is perfect. And and I'll, when we when we do that video, I'll tell you why. Got the four of pentacles, the five, which I think is such a beautiful card. You know, the person sitting under the tree, almost looking for shelter. Now, I think this is great. This is the Six of Pentacles, and what I think is so great about this is normally the Six of Pentacles kind of looks like a choosy card, like you're choosing to pay this person because it's the fair thing to do. This is such a cool interpretation because really you might be in a situation where you have a lot of mouths to feed or you have a lot of hands you know there's there's people that you need you know there's so many interpretations in this this uh, depiction I think that is a fantastic um, six of Pentacles then you got the seven of Pentacles about waiting and, and cultivating the eight of Pentacles which is a lot a lot like the traditional one you know about cultivating a cultivating a craft and working hard you got the nine of pentacles and again you got more of that beautiful diversity I think it's really lovely that um, a, a few of these cards really depict both persons of, of dif different ethnicities but also people of different ages and I think that's so important in tarot but you know an independent woman doesn't have to be a young thing <laughs> you know now this is a uh, playing into that too we've got the ten of pentacles and it really does it looks like a mother a teenager and a young boy and gosh guys i look can i tell you how much i heard this just because just because it really kind of speaks to me of maybe being a single mom and still being the ten of pentacles like having it all Oh my gosh, that just, I'm sorry, I gush about that because, again, I, I like having different depictions other than just the traditional, you know, turn of the century kind of, um, you know, stereotype. And then you have the Page of Pentacles, and honestly, oh gosh, guys, this deck is going to be showing up in my How to Tarot, you can just tell. I love the fact that this is a, a book learner, right? This is someone who learns from books, and that's such a Pentacles thing. 
because you know it's almost like being very book smart or you know that child who is just so good that you know loves to read about things or loves to learn then you've got the knight of pentacles and this is another great one because you know the knight um i had a great reader i just heard this the other day one of the readers that i follow here and again i have a fangirl i have several several uh, channels that I follow she said she said something really amazing she goes you know the knight is the coolest knight the knight of pentacles is he gets a bad rap of being very slow but he always gets where he's going right he always he's the he's the one knight you know all of the other knights are a little bit frivolous they want to get where they're going fast they want to complete their mission yesterday but the Pentacles, he knows what steps he has to follow, and he's going to get to that apex, right? He's going to get to the mountaintop, right? He knows he will out of sure, you know, uh, self-reliance. Then you have the Queen of Pentacles, and this is a really beautiful card because, again, you have another book. So maybe uh, I, I'm going to have so much fun with this because it has, it does have all the dandelions, and it has the bunny, but um, the other thing is it kind of has her having one arm over. And the thing about the pentacles is that they are very sensual. They, they're used, they're, they like touch, right? And it's funny, you know, when you hear pentacles, you think, oh, they're so stodgy. All they care about is money and, you know, doing things the straight laced way. No, um, you know, a, a queen of pentacles woman can be a Taurus woman and a Taurus a Capricorn, a Virgo you know, for, they get a reputation as being all very, you know, kind of straight man, but they, they enjoy sensual. They, they, they're the, their very suit is the physical, right? The pentacle is the physical. So for her to touch her face, uh, also, you know what that kind of reminds me of is it kind of reminds me of self-care, you know, like when you take care of yourself in the physical sense, like you put on a charcoal mask or you do the deep, deep conditioning on your hair you know doesn't that feel so good you know when you just kind of rub it in your face you know I'm sorry I'm going off on a tangent but I I do also think the king of pentacles is really great in this depiction most depictions have him looking at the pentacle like that's the center of his world like he cares about that that gold only here the pentacle is over his head and he has a book in his hand so, you know, that really makes me think of kind of an engineer or like a doctor, someone who's really earned their their keep. They've earned their money through a lot of diligence and and thinking um, hard work. Then you got the Knight of Swords. Um, I'm sorry, Ace of Swords. You got the Ace of Swords. And that's a very traditional Ace. I think it's lovely. I, I like the colors. Now, the Two of Swords looks really amazing. You know what, I, I love the way that she's really, this card does have a lot of turbulence to it because it is, it's hard overhead, it's like, it's pushing down your emotions, it's forcing your emotions to be calm, and you know, you're staying in your headspace because you're not really acknowledging what you're feeling, and gosh, you know, that look, her head is even tilted back, that's a powerful card, I really like that. And then you've got the traditional Three of Swords, which is very refreshing to not see that pierced heart because we all know, you know, any reader, we know the Three of Swords is no picnic, but this is really kind of different. And you do, you have tears and you have pain. This also kind of looks like a, kind of like a hurricane. It really does. It looks like a, a storm, you know, it looks like a, something that really kind of, you know, blew up. The Four of Swords is so different. I really like it in this deck. It, it, it does. It looks like one of those, um, what is the word for it? When you have normally glass or seashells or metal, it's like the sound wind chimes. There you go. It's like wind chimes, right? And it is. It's almost like you're taking all your thoughts and just letting them be background noise. Oh, gosh. I'm, this is probably going to be in the How to Tarot. And I love the fact that it has the rainbow in the background. That's just such a unique one because so, you know, so many depictions really go on the Rider Waite Smith, which is completely okay. I mean, it's iconic. But then you got the Five of Swords, which I also think is a great one because, again, the Five of Swords is another one of those really sad ones where you normally think, okay, there's winner losers, one person smug. But the other, this really kind of speaks of, you know, 
walking away in defeat because there really is no winning, right? There's no winning, kind of winning's futile or, you know, whoever is on the other side of those swords is gonna feel like they defeated you anyway. Now, the Six of Swords is yet another great interpretation. Um, the Six of Swords normally shows three people. It usually shows what looks like a man, a woman, and a child in a boat. And again, I, I feel like she's really, this artist is very good with what looks like a parent and child. Because this could be a man, it could be a woman, and the child could be a boy or a girl. Um, but it definitely looks like two people, and it, it, it does. It's It's you know, going to a calmer place. It's walking through the door to something better. And I do, I really like that. That really almost gives me kind of a, you see a lot of judgment cards that look that way, like you're, you're onto something better. Now, let me just tell you right now, um, this image, this card is actually what sold me on the deck. This is the image that she had posted on the website. And I absolutely loved the fact that the Seven of Swords the Seven of Swords is normally the Sneaky Pete card, right? Like, uh, what is it? Spirit Connection. Her name is Amy. She's so cute. She always she calls it her Sneaky Pete card, and I don't know if everyone calls it that, but it's the it's the traitor, right? It's the person who it's the the turncoat, the 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 double agent, the person who sneaks away, the the person who's trying to deceive you. And what I love about this depiction is because, yes. Yes, the Seven of Swords means deception, but it also means hiding what you really think, right? Because what is a double agent, right? This is a, a double agent is someone who appears as if they're going along with what your agenda is, but they really feel and think something else. They really feel and think the opposite. And what I see is that that card comes up a lot in readings for people who are in dogmatic dogmatic situations where they're told what to believe where they're not allowed to have diverging thoughts it is sometimes a little bit of a card of oppression and look at this person he's a, he tends to be a younger person a little bit more susceptible vulnerable and he's holding on to those swords which are thoughts he's almost guarding them he's like afraid to say what he really thinks I was absolutely moved by this card and again this is the card right here this is the card that sold me on this deck now you got this eight of swords which I think is great it has the the same tied up meaning except the woman is blindfolded but she's not tied up and you actually see a hand from the universe handing her the sword right I thought that was a really beautiful interpretation um, it's very like the regular eight of swords but a little bit different then you got the Nine of Swords, which is really about anxiety and worry and sleepless nights. And you do, you have a bear over you, which in Lenormand can really mean a boss or a CEO. Um, it can be someone who's a little bit more controlling. Um, and then she also has a snake there, right? So you can be f a fear or afraid of deception, or you could be. The other thing is that with a snake being in your ear, you could be listening to the thoughts that aren't true, right? You could be lying to yourself. And I think that has a lot of, that has a lot of meaning to it. Now, I really, I really like this because most Ten of Swords do come across with a little bit of that bloody gore, you know, well, you were just flat out victimized kind of feeling. And here you do, you still feel all that pain, but the thing about the swords is that I always believe that the swords, you do, you have the skull that's impaled. Um, but the thing about the swords that I always like to remember is that most of the time, those ten of swords situations, the first nine swords came, came towards you over time, most of the time, right? Unless you see it next to the tower. But um, most of the time, you know, you might have, it's kind of like, you've already experienced all the red flags and maybe you went against your good judgment and you ended up with the ten of swords and i'm not saying that this is you know one of those things where it happened to you because you let it happen to me you absolutely not um it can be a surprise like you see it looks like these swords are coming out of the ether right but i do love the fact that it does still it still embodies all of the all of the pain without, you know, without there being a whole lot of blood. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, I, I sometimes some of those ten of swords 
cards I can't even look, <laughs> right? The page starts is really great too. I always say I love decks that depict the pages as children. And you do, you see someone who's kind of running along the fog and, and carrying a sword. Now the Knight of Swords is great. Again, she's falling right in the theme of the, the pages are children, the knights are young adults or 20 year olds in their early 20s. And I do, I think he's a very handsome knight. He definitely looks very articulate. <laughs> Then the Queen of Swords, which I always have an affinity for because again, you know, she has she has a, a look of she has a look of experience on her face, right? She doesn't look like a cold character, but she looks like a straightforward one. Um, and again, I love this card because I'm a sun sign Libra and you know that's just the Queen of Swords is my girl. Is my home girl. Then you got the King of Swords, which I think is really great. Um, I love the fact that, you know, again, his, his shirt is like clouds and his, his sword is hovering. It's almost like he's, he's riven, risen above. This really reminds me of kind of a meditation card, like someone who has conquered their own mind. And then you got the traditional Ace of Wands, which I think is great. She has a lot of crystals and a lot of the wands have crystals at the top, which I think is really cool. Now the Two of Wands, we had a tarot a little while ago about this. I think this is great. You definitely get a, a great a look of, of excited expectation, right? And you do, you still get that feeling like, okay, you know, you got one wand there and you got another wand that's, you know, yet to be, you know, yet to be explored. And you see, oh, here we go, one wand on the ground and one is there, like she's looking at it like, hmm, you know, what can I do with that? Then we got the Three of Wands, and this one's, you know, it's interesting. The Three of Wands is usually so bright and sunny. Um, here you have someone more in a night scene, and you do, you have the, again, you have the crystals of the wands glowing, and her looking up at the moon. It is, it's very mystical. It's very mystical, but you definitely get an impression of her looking forward, and you get an a, um, impression of activation with the glowing crystals. Now, the Four of Wands is really quite lovely. Oh, gosh, guys. We talk a lot about it being a wedding card or a twin flame card. Um, again, I love I love the depiction of the couple. She almost looks like she's wearing a wedding dress. They're kind of floating. And the Four Wands. And the colors are very parallel, too, because we talked a lot about how, you know, it's kind of the 11-11, the twin flame card. The Five of Wands is quite different. Instead of there being five um, persons competing, you see Five Wands as if, um, I kind of like this because it almost looks like she's, um, have you ever seen when somebody's uh, bearing down for a storm, you know, they put wooden, they put wooden covers over their windows to make sure everything's safe. It kind of looks like that, like you're preparing for the storm. And you do, you see clouds in the background. I think that's really cool. And then Six of Wands, we've got that victory card, and that's so great. She almost looks like a witch who won some kind of competition, and everybody's, like, levitating their wands and, like, yeah, yeah, you did it, right? That's really cool. Now, the Seven of Wands is really different as well. Normally, you see one person holding one wand against six, and again, what is, what's true to tradition is that you don't see who's holding the wands. You just see them flaming and coming up at her, like almost like pitchforks. But she's got two wands and she's holding them and she just looks like, you know, I'm, it's almost like, it is almost like that meditation before action. She, she knows she's prepared. That's a really different kind of interpretation. And then the eight of wands looks like a lot of action too. It, it almost looks like action coming from her solar plexus, which is really kind of different, you know? And I do, I think this really kind of entails more of an exciting feeling, like a, a, a source of, I also kind of get a, a sense of endless potential, like things are going my way. Um, the Nine of Wands is really powerful too, because it's about, it's about holding out and, you know, fighting the good fight to the very end. And you do, you see one wand that has the purple stone and the other eight have the, um, the kind of um, golden, um, you know, kind of um, very uh, whiskey colored kind of stones. And you see a snake there. And it's interesting, snakes can be deception, but it can also be shedding of a skin. It can be letting go. So again, this is a great card that can be read in the reverse, you know, of giving up the fight. But in the upright, it's very powerful. 
it's almost like, you know, I refuse to yield. She's still not down on her knees. She refuses to ever completely, you know, fall. Then you cut the Ten of Wands, which is really great. You see a rocky terrain and you see a cabin. And again, you've got a while to go. You, you still have to go a long way before, you know, so it is about those burdens that you have to carry. Then you got the page, which is another child, which I think is so great. You see someone who's kind of at a seashore, and she's all excited. I think that's a really fun depiction. Um, the Knight of Wands is a, is a woman, which I think is great. She kind of alternates between the knights. They're not all young men. And you see someone kind of jumping off the cliff. And what's kind of great is it almost looks like the, the Page of Wands grew up. And she knows how to jump off cliffs, <laughs> which is such a wands thing. Then you've got the Queen of Wands, and she does. She does have a very vivacious kind of expression. I really kind of like kicking her head back, and I think that's really great. Now, this King of Wands I fell in love with. I did not see a picture of him ahead of time, but I think it is so great that he has a cat. <laughs> I think, you know, because like the traditional, and the funny thing is in this deck, the Queen doesn't have a cat, which she normally does, or does she? No. I don't see a cat. Oh, she does have a cat here. Look. Oh, it looks like a black cat. It is a black cat. But um, here I think it's great because the, um, the King of Wands is, is, he does, he definitely, he embodies, I, I'm getting a strong King of Wands vibe from this. And I think it's so great that, you know, he has his own cat, which is great because you see guys who have cats, right? Now, I did not expect to love this Ace of Cups, but I am. I'm in love with it. I, you know, it's funny, I don't really like a whole lot of eyes in my reading, even in the tattoo tarot. Sometimes I feel like they're staring at me. But um, I really like this. Again, the lighting kind of doesn't do it justice. It really does look like layers of ink. And it's, you know, it's got such a satin. But I, I do, I get a really powerful feeling from this. And it is kind of like an all-seeing eye, just kind of like the eye of the universe. The Two of Cups is really beautiful. Again, it has this like rainbow of water, and you don't know which which water is whose. So it is. It's that. It is that beautiful meeting of two people. The Three of Cups is very traditional, but yet still beautiful. Again, um, I like the fact that you know you have different you have different backgrounds here and different hair colors. So this is really not you know doesn't really indicate age. Um, so it really can mean, you know, partying with friends. The Four of Cups is quite beautiful. I think it, it really did come across. The Three of Cups are in the ocean, which, you know, really gives a real emotions kind of feel. And, you know, not even turning around to see that other cup. That's really pretty. Now, the Five of Cups really struck me. I am in awe of how this deck utilizes the, a gradient of dark colors. It almost looks like a dark rainbow. It's almost like you can't see happiness, like the, the rainbow is tainted by your gloomy feelings, right? And that's such a Five of Cups thing. And you do, you see the three spilled cups and then you see the two. And what is really amazing is that this person really doesn't see the two behind them. Really doesn't. Her back is completely like, don't even know it's there. So that's such amazing. I love the six of cups. I think I love this whole deck. I've probably said I love about 20 times in this whole reading, um, in this flip through. But the six of cups, normally you see two children and here you see like two teenagers, it's like two young people and one person has the sun on her cloak. And what's beautiful is there's five cups in the forefront and there's more of those dandelions and she's holding like the ace of cups in her hand. And I love the fact he's just looking at her, right? And you know how the six of cups is that person that you feel like a little kid. It's like someone that you grew up with, that you, it's someone that you have fun with. And look at that, you know, that doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can just really be someone who has your heart, you know. Um, I think that's really glorious because that can be a real sign of, of a good friend or, or you know, um, a, um, a, a high school sweetheart. 
Now, the Seven of Cups is really beautiful, too. You see a woman, and she's looking up at the cups, and she's like, hmm, she's tapping her chin, like, which one should I choose? And you do, you have the glowing cup, which apparently is the one to choose, and then you see the other cups, and you do have a little bit of that traditional, you know, like snake popping out of one of them. So you know that maybe not all the cups are for you, but you can see she's almost looking up at the snake like she's tempted by it, right? Like she might not be seeing the cup that's correct, <laughs> which is such a seven of cups thing. The eight of cups is really quite beautiful too. I love the fact that it really almost looks like the moon. It looks like you're in a state of confusion but you're walking away from the cups that are set up and you're going through a door which looks like the sun, I think that's really great. You know, it is. It's like it's like going through going through a door is like walking through a door to something better, right? Then you get the nine of cups, which really is it is supposed to be meant as that 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 lucky card, that birthday, that surprise present. And here you have someone who really looks like she's floating in the water. Um, I'm going to have to meditate on this one a little bit. It's not a bad depiction at all. I think it's quite lovely. But I am, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm, you know me, I'll, I'll get into the interpretations as it comes out in readings. But that one I'm definitely going to have to look at. Now the Ten of Cups, oh my gosh, you know, the Ten of Cups is really gorgeous. Uh, again, it shows a family swimming, you know, and you've got the Ten Cups floating around you. And I do, I always say, you know, the Ten of Cups is that happiness money can't buy. So again, you have another one of those really beautiful family cards. It, it really is about having emotional fulfillment. Then you got the Page of Cups, and I love this Page of Cups. It's really great. Someone at the ocean and her, their hair. Um, the great thing I love about this card is that you can't really tell if it's a boy or a girl. It could really be either. And in the distance, there's, there's, she's, he's holding about a cup, right? And you know how traditionally the Page of Cups has that surprise? And look, there's a mermaid in the distance. And he's kind of holding up the cup, right? It's almost like the fish that pops out of the cup is a mermaid in this deck. And I think that's so great. I'm going to have a fun time with that. Now, next you have the Knight of Cups, and I think this is great, too, because even though they have a bun, it can still be a man or a woman, right? You know, it's still a little bit undecided, so I kind of like that. And what's cool is that that mermaid that you saw that was popping out of the ocean, and I do, I think she almost does this on purpose. It's like the page is growing up into the night or something. But the same mermaid that they saw, you know, it's almost like they're waving goodbye and the, the mermaid tail is splashing off into the distance. Um, and sometimes that can be very indicative of the knight, too, because, you know, sometimes the knight is chasing, he's, he's always running off into the distance to give his cup to somebody, right? <laughs> so sometimes you don't always have someone to give a cup to. <laughs> Now, the, uh, the, the Queen of Cups is quite beautiful. She did quite flat out made this person a mermaid. And the hair is just glorious. I think that's so beautiful. It's like the sky is in her tail, the stars are in her hair, and she comes out of the sea at night. It's just, that's just mystical. It's just magical. And then last but not least, we got the King of Cups. And I think this is amazing. Again, we have another king who's quite, he levitates. He's, he's like the apex of the suit, and he does. He knows, he knows everything about the, his feelings and about the universe and a lot of times that can be a lot of emotional balance and I just think that I always think of that when I think of the Knight of Cup, um, King of Cups. But wow guys this was a little bit of a longer flip through. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, the corners of the cards do have a, um, they are not gilded but they have a matte, um, they have a matte kind of purple edging to it. So I'm going to very quickly, I'm just going to shuffle this real quick and I'm going to put it in the bag that I made so we can finish up. Now, these are very flexible cards, but I try not to, I'm, I'm good at bridging. I'm, I'm actually learning some card tricks, but um, I'm good at bridging, but I'm just going to shuffle it a few times. And again, if you are interested in this deck, um, it, it is going to show, if you're watching it at the time that I post this, it's going to show as being sold out, 
but um, you can if you if you favorite like if you have an Etsy account if you favorite the uh, the post you know it, it didn't go away it she didn't delete the post just because it's sold out she probably will have um, reprints in the future and if you're interested in that go ahead and favorite it on Etsy that way the next time it's in stock she can notify you and again she's very communicative I, I had such a wonderful experience she was so sweet and she kept me updated even with all this world pandemic stuff so you'll see the the bag is not included I made this bag but um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my cards in here and we're gonna wrap it up oh they fit <laughs> oh they fit hold on sorry I'm kinda doing this one handed all right oh so cool i'm so excited okay i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna tie the knot <laughs> i'm gonna tie the knot and so i appreciate you stopping by for my first ever flip through um back in january i do i have uh, 31 days of tarot i talk about a lot of the, the decks that i use and if you're interested in this deck all of the links are in the description box below I thank you for stopping by, and I'll catch you later. Bye.